Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. We are live. The Craft Beer News segment. It is October 20th, 2023. Every single week we bring you the craft beer news we feel you need to know about. My name is Kent. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's go around and see what everybody is drinking. See what everybody else is drinking. Starting with Dan. Dan, what do you got? I've got a bacon and eggs from Pizza Port. Perfect. Dennis. I went with a double fisting route. I'm having another extra special bitter from Waypost Brewing Company. Wendy. So I am finishing up this peach smash. Can't figure out where it is from odd side. And on deck, I have a Jade and silent Bob from Ascension, but I, I have a quick question though. Um, the bacon and eggs, is that a stout? It's a Porter. It's a okay. coffee Imperial Porter. I think you would really okay. enjoy it. Just knowing what you like to drink. All right. Good to know. Uh, for myself, I have got Dan's favorite style of beer. A pumpkin. You have a brewed IPA. Jacko. Oh, J- from <laughs> Sam Adams. Jacko. Jacko. I got two of them, actually, uh, the that Jack- I am going to be going through. Jacko. Jacko. Uh, that is going to be the craft beer news segment. I have a discussion I want to start off with for this craft beer news segment. Uh, there was a, uh, a lawsuit due to an NDA for a former employee of a brewery that recently came out uh, regarding utilizing a recipe that they had used within the system itself. Um, So I'm going to go through and we're going to discuss a few different topics uh, regarding this because within the world of the culinary world, where there are a lot of chefs, uh, bakers, professionals that create their own recipes um, I'm curious who you think potentially owns the recipe in these specific situations. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about, because we're going to be talking about beer um, and we're going to be talking about the situation in particular. Uh, but this was a, a beer that the person brought in um, that was created before they were hired. They brought in the beer. Uh, the brewer, you know, the owner of the brewer loved the beer. They brewed the beer at that brewery. So it was originally created by the brewer. That brewer left, went to a different brewery and brewed that beer again at a different brewery. So my first question to you is, is that where do you believe the ownership of this type of intellectual property where you bring in something that you had created to site a um and then bring it to site b like who owns it is it site a is it the brewer um i don't think site b was claiming any ownership but between the brewer that left site a for site b um who do you think should own the recipe um the brewing process that kind of stuff even though the first time it was brewed on a corporate commercial system was at site a um, I'm going to swing it to Dan here because it's a business question and I always love his, his business answers. Yeah. So I think if you brought this recipe into, and we see this in the music industry, Dennis will probably know what I'm talking about too. Um, if you bring a recipe into there and start brewing it under that, um, entity, same as if you bring songs, it's why Tapper didn't sign with labels for a while because they didn't want to give up songs to a record label that Fred Durst was running. If you bring that recipe to that business, that's their recipe. Um, If you remember one of the final episodes we had in a studio before COVID with Nick, the brewer, he had told us he could never make Ninja pirate, even though he came up with that recipe. It was a, um, a black Lotus recipe. So he couldn't make that somewhere else. So I think that entity actually owns that at that point. Now, he came up with that recipe at Black Lotus. This brewer Correct. had the recipe before Site A. I don't want to call the, the name or insert a random brewery and cause shade when it's not there. But like I was saying, it's just like uh, a band or musician that brings music to a record label and gives a record label permission to use that. That's their music at that point. You can't just 
take it with you and be like, oh, hey, by the way, now I'm using this. No, now because you made it to that brewery. And I'm sure they had some type of agreement, um, even if it was verbal, that you can't just take it with you elsewhere. That's a really good question. Um, hmm. Well, and to to go with that music thing, like Taylor Swift had to re-record her old albums to get the rights back, right? <laughs> didn't own the masters she owned the songwriting ability or the songwriting rights song rights uh for those songs and those albums but she had to re-record them uh to make them her own uh, I, and the legalities behind this i know it's not the same thing right um it depends on the agreement right on like what that on that what that uh brewer and what the brewery had for that oh i have my grandma's recipe that i'm bringing in to make for this kitchen or something along those lines okay does that recipe now belong to the restaurant um now in in the the world of restaurants the reason that i know some of this is that i'm i'm aware of a a professional baker that went to a restaurant that brought their recipes to that restaurant and when um the 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 lead baker was um you know the the owner they parted ways he took his recipes with him mm -hmm. these were recipes that he cultivated prior to the the restaurant brought them in made them once they parted ways he took the recipes with them there was no copy of the recipes there were like the mm -hmm. the recipes were gone um for for that that restaurant like they didn't have the rights to that now obviously they could have caused some type of um you know agreement of what happens when you do that hey if i'm gonna bring in i own these recipes you will sign that i own these recipes if i leave i take these recipes with me um but a lot of this we're typically dealing with either uh, and we'll say it was a big brewery so i'll say that there was a potential you know strong arm with an nda um or uh, if, if it was a small brewery, like I, I feel that there's only I don't, I don't want to say there's only so many ways to brew a beer. But if you're not making like beer with frozen pizzas and cash, um, you know, the the recipe itself isn't necessarily too crazy. Um, but Wendy, what do you think? Um, I think that I agree with everybody <laughs> a little bit of what everybody has said that um there definitely has to be some type of agreement up front as to how you're going to handle it um i think if that recipe was brewed somewhere else before you went to that rest that brewery um it would probably be yours and if you were leaving and the brewery wanted to keep it they should pay you for that recipe um i think if you were created it while you were at the at that brewery it definitely belongs to the brewery. I don't um, think any of us are lawyers either. For the listeners at home, in case you're getting any no, legal th this is not Yeah, don't take advice. this. Yeah. <laughs> this is our opinion. Yeah. No, that is definitely all. These are all of our opinions. And obviously, we're bringing in different different aspects dan you talk about the the music industry and how music yeah um you know how it works within that industry i'm taking it from a more culinary industry portion because i'm not talking about the brewery portion i don't know about brewery recipes and how that works but at least in the culinary world there are a lot of people who go from restaurant they, they you know move from restaurant mm -hmm. to restaurant um if, if you've ever want to see what the biggest like turnover rate is for any industry it's the the culinary industry yeah. um and that's front of the house back of the house that's everywhere like you look at some of their some people's resumes and they're switching jobs every six to eight months um so dan what if so what if they so they created the beer before the brewery brewed it at the brewery moved it you still think they own it obviously my next question would be what if they created that beer at the brewery can they take that recipe and move it somewhere else um and the second follow-up question is is how much do i need to change that recipe for it to really be something different oh good question so yeah i don't think they can take it with them if they created it there now, I want to go back to the bringing it with you. I would assume any halfway decent business owner would have a discussion about that. You know, if they're if someone's bringing in a recipe they already created, I would hope the owner would or owners would have a discussion about, you know, if they own that now or if they're just using it. You know what I mean? Like do licensing it, basically. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they would have that. Um, as far as a recipe, that's a loaded question. How much do you have to change it? 
uh, in order to use it somewhere else. That's I'd Again, say not probably legal a, advice. Yeah, don't yeah, don't take legal advice. I would say <laughs> probably ten to twenty percent at least has to change. Just spitballing because I'm not what's, entirely what's sure. Ten percent of a recipe, like that's a good question. So here we go again. Not legal advice. I'm not sure. Maybe the type of malts that are in it. Maybe the type of hops that you're using. Like if I'm if I'm changing the grain build a little bit and using a little bit more chocolate or a little bit less, you know, uh, of a specific malt. Yeah, um, or something to that effect. A different hop. I mean, if I if I go straight from instead of using say like 100% Simcoe to 100% Chinook, like that's what you would the, love. You makes it a <laughs> true story. I definitely would, but it makes it a totally different recipe. Yeah, and At that some, would change it enough for you. I think. At some point, you're really just pulling the pepper out of the flea shit, right? So it's just really <laughs> fine there. Like, is that a new phrase? Uh, but like, it it it, it uh, yeah, you're right. How many ways can you make a beer? How, how what counts as a difference? It's it's infinite. There's an infinite ways to to make a beer because there's a, a you could a, apparently you can add frozen pizza as an adjunct. So there's an infinite seen amount of ways bills. to make a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just picturing hundred dollar bills going in. That would be nice. Um, <laughs> it's happened. Well, so. <laughs> Earlier, we were talking in the previous episode, we were talking about um, having the balls to tell a brewer that their beer doesn't taste right. And I had a situation where we went, I went to a brewery that I go to on a regular basis, and I know the brewer, and I told him, this doesn't taste right. There's something going on with it. I don't know if it's the lines. I, I didn't know what it was because I'm not a brewer, but I am a big fan of that beer. And I could tell him this beer does not taste the way it's supposed to. And he kind of blew me off about it. But later he told me that they were playing with the recipe and they changed the hot bill to it. So it did. It completely changed the way that the beer tasted. So I think that if you are changing just a little bit of the recipe, it's not the same recipe. I mean, you can you can throw off, not throw off, but you can change the recipe enough to where the the hot build is instead of, you know, instead of throwing it in the boil at 60 minutes, you're throwing it in at 58 minutes. Like, you know, what's the is, is the recipe, the ingredients is the recipe, the creation is the recipe like is it all encompassing? I think there's a lot more. That it's it's hard for me, especially when you owned the property before going to site A, as we call the first brewery in this um, thought experiment. Um, owning the 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 beer before, I think you you have to be able to to own it unless they say they're buying that beer from you or that license or that thing from you as you're being hired. You didn't create the beer when you were brewing there. You created the beer before, brewed it there, and now you're brewing it somewhere else. Every Disney animator, if anything that they make is property of Disney, right? And that's just something they sign. So I think it depends on the agreement. Yeah, what what they have. If this brewery that you're talking about didn't have an agreement with this brewer, they may be SOL on that. But I, I think they they are trying to utilize a um, a non disclosure agreement mm. uh, regarding the beer that's brewing because once they started brewing it there, they felt it became their property, mm-hmm. even though it was the person's recipe before they were hired day one. Mm. So your Disney animators, they're animating at Disney and everything they make from day one and beyond is is perfect. But what if it's the um, the animation they made for their application process? Is that owned by Disney or is that owned by the person? Like, it's a great there, question. there's a lot of nitpicky things that we can do, but I think at some point. As a creator, um, we'll, we'll call him chef, a brewer, a uh, baker. Like you, you have to be able to take ownership of anything you make before, um, even when you're bringing it in there. Like the mm-hmm. the restaurant that I talked about that had the the head uh, baker. 
like the the recipes that he had, like they were in a little book and nobody could look at that book but him. Mm -hmm. And he he baked everything, made everything. And then when he left, so did the book. Um, And it was it was crazy because he accidentally left the book there um as Oops. he left and had like what had paid someone to go pick it up for him like a, co- a former co-worker um but yeah those are the things that you have to think about when you're creating this process so like taylor swift you know i don't know if she got you know what when i think music rights and licensing like i always think of like tlc how they got you know mm. severely strong armed um you know she might have been the same she was like 14 when she started yeah. singing and making songs so she might have you know got taken advantage of to where now she's bigger than the license itself um but i'll i'll, I'll leave it to you guys uh for for that question like Is there or I guess the question would be, is there a way you think that this person um, like what would you think would allow them to be the owner of that recipe? In agreement with the owner of the brewery before they make it. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Let him know. I'm bringing something in. It's mine. If I leave, so does this. Yeah. So and that that was the thing is he he didn't he didn't. um put the kibosh on site a from making that he just took it to site B. Yeah. So site a could still make it. And we, we see this in the, the, the biggest one I could think of within the, the world here is Celis. Um, Celis white used to be brewed at Michigan beer company. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's currently brewed at Michigan brewing works. Um, and it's also brewed at Celis brewing in Austin, Texas, I believe, which is the original, uh, owners of okay. the, the the sales property. So who, you know, did he license the property because he knows the recipe? Can he make it? Like, you know, is that copyright infringe? Can you copyright infringe on a beer? Have we seen that before? That'd be a good question for a friend of ours that we know. Um, but that's a good point too. So what's stopping the original brewery from making this? If they have the recipe, if there was an agreement, I was not in an agreement i don't think you could stop them from doing it wasn't there something was it like detroit dwarf or something like that where there were multiple breweries that made it so detroit beer company makes it and old nation makes it but that was a shared recipe agreement between i believe travis fritz owned the recipe okay allowed detroit beer company to continue to make it while saying i'm going to make it up at old nation Mm. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's there. There was definitely a that that was a friendly agreement. Everybody was happy with the results. Like, okay, Detroit Beer Company still got to make it. Travis got to take the because he, he put it in at least bottles recently, mm-hmm. um, over at Old Nation. So, yeah, the, there's within the beer world. I think we see a lot of friendly handshake agreements. Um. Like, I don't think anyone's taking the recipe of M43 and taking it over to say, um, we'll use it just as a joke, but North Center Brewing over in Northville, Michigan, just south of Baseline Road. Uh, they're, they're not taking the recipe there to brew it there. Like, it's just not, it's not happening. But if Travis was just like, yeah, go for it, take it, you know, or go take this one recipe, like, if they're not making cart horse anymore. And the person's like, can I brew cart horse here? And he's like, yeah, sure. Like th- these are the kinds of things that we do like to see within the industry is like collaboration, cooperation. But there are going to be times when you see larger breweries like, no, we own this. We own this property. This is our property. Whether you you know made it before us or not, you brewed it here. So now it's ours. Mm-hmm. Wait, are they not act do they come out and say they're not making cart horse anymore no 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 this is this was a uh uh an example <laughs> just an one example. you haven't seen yeah. in a while yeah just just one i haven't seen in a while I'm like wait i like that one sorry i, I didn't mean to upset you, <laughs> you or scare my heart you for a second but <laughs> wait okay. no bring it back <laughs> so then wendy they're not making m43 anymore but he went off brewing is Got the okay to make it. First, yeah. first, first of all, that recipe is way too expensive for Kiwana Brewing to make. 
uh, to sell at their they price point. They could not point. sell it at two fifty a pint. <laughs> No, I went, I went to when I went to Kiwana Brewing Company, somebody had explained to me that they keep their ABVs and their prices low so that they can create this price point of I, I think it's like three dollars a pint now. Sorry to disappoint you, Dennis. It's, it's been a while. It's inflation. It's fine. Dang inflation. Yeah, it happens. I I thought the person lied to me when they said how much I owed. Like, I'm like, did, did you get both my beers and my six pack? What do you mean? It's 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> a side note about Kiwanau Brewing Company. I do love them. That whole west side of the UP, the, 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 things aren't expensive until they are, right? Cost of food, super high. You know, cost of living is higher than you'd think it'd be. Cost of beer? Not so bad because dirt there's cheap. That, oh my god! There's things so that you don't mind the will... cost of living. Well, <laughs> especially living up there. Okay, oh, first I'll take it back, Dan. But uh... <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Like a, a need... burger and fry at a small time bar, ten bucks. Yeah, the two or three like labats that I had there, six bucks. Like, I'm like, what makes do you mean? No sense. Well, you don't have to spend money on two air conditioners there. That's, that's oh, for true. the food. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that was my topic. I, I wanted to kind of get your guys' thoughts and opinions. Again, we are not lawyers. Thank you, Dennis, for making sure we remember remind everyone. Um, but let's, uh, you know, you weren't here last week. What did you want to talk about this week? Oh, gosh. I found a few things I wanted to talk about. Uh, some Just news one. Coming up. Just I'm, one. I'm, I'm, okay. Do you want something more personal or something a little bit more national? Let's do national. Okay. All right. Let's talk about here ah okay actually it's local and national i saw uh some more advertising for a documentary coming out uh documentary series beer city usa it's part documentary part uh commercial i'm really interested in that this is something i wanted to do years ago i was uh working with some different investors and different filmmakers my brother owns a company over in la called last drop films um really really cool company does uh works on some really cool movies documentaries commercials you name it um and i want to make a documentary about michigan beer why it stands out you know so much and yes i'm biased but COVID happened things fell through and you know we weren't able to do that you know and now i see all this advertising recently and i know i'm targeted on this but um for a beer city usa uh looks like it's a mini series of some sort i just want to know what you guys if you've heard anything about that going on right now or or what you you know i'm just very interested and i want to see more talk about the magic that is michigan beer i uh, i'm i'm gonna cut in here real quick yeah please uh one there was actually a documentary that was released last year too called the great mm -hmm. beer state mm -hmm. um it is the 25th anniversary of the michigan brewers guild talks about uh it's a follow-up to a book called the rising tide the story of michigan brewers guild mm -hmm. uh which has been released we are working on getting a showing an online showing mm -hmm. of that documentary here on better on draft uh for people who have not been able to see it because there is no actual like distribution mm -hmm. at this time within the documentary documentary part two uh as you are setting it up we are off next week but we will be back in two weeks on mm -hmm. november 3rd for the beer city usa manitow i believe is the name of the organization manitow films uh will be in studio with us to talk about that documentary yes. uh so while we prepare uh with your uh article uh they will be here in two weeks to talk a little bit more so maybe we can spitball talk Think of some questions that we might want to ask uh, tonight for that. But beer, do you guys know how Beer City got its name? Beer City. Tell me. Please tell me. I was hoping you guys knew. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> there was it, it was an if I'm not mistaken, it was an online competition um a long time ago and by a long time maybe like 10 12 years ago where it was you know named beer city usa so this was before the craft beer explosion um and at that time grand rapids was a pretty big craft beer city at that with founders with grand rapids brewing like there there was still plenty of breweries in there so it got named beer city usa in this contest and mm -hmm. they kind of just ran with it mm -hmm. and that's that's really that's really it there's not 
You know, is, is it Beer City USA in 2023? Who's to say? Not yeah. me, because I don't want our Western Michigan friends to uh, <laughs> uh, be too upset at me for sure. It's on the sign. Which one? That's my issue with the whole Beer City USA thing is that when you're driving down 96, going to Beer City USA, you got Food City, what up, Soda City? Like, like Wait, there's what's Soda five, City? There's like four or five. Not city. There, there's literally like four or five billboards on the way to Grand Rapids from the Detroit area that have a different name for the city. So it's like beer city, comedy city. And I'm like, pick one. You can't be fucking everything. <laughs> it drives me insane. Stop okay, Grand, it. Pick one. Grand Rapids can be a bit of a himbo. Let let it be. You know, it, it, wa- it wants to be fucking everything. <laughs> it does. I'm like, stop it. I'm very excited to watch this, uh, this documentary series. And I literally just heard about it like yesterday. And as, as I was starting to think about things for today's uh, episode. And so, uh, and listeners, in case you weren't, if you didn't catch that, I did not know that we we're having this up in a, in, a, in a couple episodes or a couple weeks here. So I am doubly excited. And uh, uh, I want to know, I want to know more. I want to find out more. I want to know where we're going. I know it's in collaboration also with uh, uh, like a Grand Rapids, like a, Worst beer or something along those lines. I don't remember what it was here, but anything that can help highlight, you know, local business, small business, you know, BIPOC owned, you know, LGBTQ owned businesses. I think that's such an important thing to do right now, especially as we're coming out swinging from, you know, lockdowns in the pandemic. Things are coming back and we want it to come back strong. So go support your local filmmaker, go support your local brewery, go support your local business. And and I want to know more. What are we talking about? What are we going to be getting done here? So this was there was a an online poll, Beer City USA, done by Charles uh, Charlie Papazian in 2009. Charlie Papazian, mm-hmm. uh, obviously well known uh, in the beer and brewing community. Um, 2013 was the last year that they announced a Beer City USA, and it actually tied Asheville, North Carolina, mm-hmm. Grand Rapids, and Asheville as the top beer city in the United States. And then the poll was retired meaning that the last time it was ever done, uh, Grand Rapids was named Beer City USA, and they kind of just uh, taken that and marketed it, and uh, (laughs) that's kind of what it is. So formerly, uh, I was looking in here, formerly Furniture Capital of the World. Oh, that's less exciting. Art man. (laughs) That's Steel Case and Hayworth and, uh, yeah. Now Beer City USA. So yeah, so we'll be having them on the show. Um, obviously, I know a lot of people that are not from the Michigan area will talk about all these other cities like uh, Nashville um, is, is always a big one. Nashville, Asheville, um, San Diego. Um, so here's a big one Denver. I would like to see a documentary on because there are a lot of breweries closing there is Portland. A, for a long time, that was the number one beer city in America. Now they're going downhill yeah. really fast. So Sorry, I think a documentary out of the, yeah, a documentary out of there, I think would be really good. Yeah, I think uh, they, they talked about uh, Brewery 26 just closed over there. So, yeah, there's a lot of breweries that are uh, closing. I, I don't necessarily know why. I don't think we really have a an answer as to why. Mm-hmm. You know, it it exploded and collapsed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good way big, to put big, it. Big crunch. That's unfortunate, but yeah, uh, uh, smarter smarter people than me need to figure that one out. Not me. <laughs> well, thinking of smarter people than you, Wendy, uh, what did you want to talk about today? Accurate. So. Uh... Mine is a little more just kind of fun. Considering that it is the spooky season, I found an article. Um, I don't even know what this website is. We'll have to put the we'll have to in the put show the notes. link up. Um, but <laughs> Sam Adams apparently is going to speak to our 
um, sinosilicophobia, which is the fear of an empty beer glass. What? <laughs> this they is not have real. Partnered, they have partnered <laughs> with a um, the summer club at Raven Hotel in Long Island City for uh, Beer Fest Fear Fest. Yes. According to uh, Lauren Price, head of head of brain at Samuel Adams, <laughs> Beer Fest Fear Fest is all about embracing beer season and facing your biggest fears. We know our drinkers are up to the challenge, and there is no other way to celebrate than with a full pint of the number one fall seasonal beer, Oktoberfest. Apparently, you pay for your ticket to a haunted house, and you are expected to go through the haunted house with a full pint of beer. Oh, dang. Now, I have a very love-hate relationship with haunted houses because I was traumatized by a JC haunted house when I was in high school, or junior high, actually, not even high school yet, because I was still in ninth grade. And then I grew up to be an adult, and I ran haunted houses. So I have the best of both worlds I guess you could call it that I'm very scared to go through them but I can also walk through them and figure out how much they spent to make it happen you're like a haunted house day walker it's Wait, weird are you, are you one of the people scared. now okay go, I was gonna ask go are you going through it now oh this, you did this like you're acting like a like a snark or like a CBY nope, but in the haunted house me. okay <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they can still scare me. It happens, but I will also walk into a room sometimes and calculate how much it costs to build that room at the same time. It's it's weird. But <laughs> so I'm just wondering like is this something that you guys would do? Like are you into haunted houses? Like Like haunted that's houses my are question. fun. Yeah, haunted houses are totally fun. What I what what was it called? Your fear of having an empty beer glass? Uh xenosilicophobia. Yeah, I totally have that. And I'm totally <laughs> taking a full beer through that because that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Went to a haunted house last year. Just because they're they're scared to scare me. And <laughs> Was even happening. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the David Pumpkin sketch from Saturday Night Live. If you're not if you're not watching uh, via our YouTube page, uh, Facebook, or Twitch, of course you can watch us live at Better on Draft and all those. Of course, catch the bottle. Uh, the bottles. Oh, catch no, the no, the videos uh, that we were David watching. Pumpkins? But yeah, I just I wanted to I mean, put something up. I am not a big that... fan of uh, haunted houses due to the no? strobe lights. Oh, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, and and the smoke. A lot of times, the smoke is an issue. Uh, smoke's fine for me. I worked at a laser tag facility. We <laughs> yeah. lived and breathed the fog machines. <laughs> Built up a, um, an immunity over time. Uh, yeah, like those yeah. those never bothered me at all. The the strobe lights at the said laser tag facilities. I always had to turn them down when I was working because uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they weren't worth it. So they would always strobe like once a second. They wouldn't strobe more than that. It would be basically just like a, a fire exit light that just kind of like strobes to tell you where it is. Yeah. No, that sounds fun, though. A haunted house they can get, you got to get through with a full glass of beer. I, I'm a big fan of that. It sounds like. Silly, you know, I silliness. think I'd get through it quicker and I would pay less attention to what was going on around me because you <laughs> you're know, focusing I'm, I'm on the, beer. the whole way through. Hmm to try and keep the beer from falling over but run it through with my pine of bcbs <laughs> like don't Here's dare touch me <laughs> some expensive <laughs> yeah. Here, for, for me two things one um i'm easily startled which is just the way i am mm -hmm. um so i will jump uh there are times where i will be playing video games and it's not even a scary part but i'll just be like oh my god like well i i shouldn't have jumped and i'm playing i'm playing like you know lego star wars or something <laughs> can't, like get, that. can't get scared by dead by daylight <laughs> I, I don't get scared i get startled for motherfucker like oh my god there's a fucking <laughs> ghost face coming up around me uh no, so that number two i don't want to go through a haunted house i don't want to hold a beer and not be able to drink it that's probably the yeah wait can you not the mine would be gone by the time i got there anyways can, can you drink it as you go or i mean you, like... i'm assuming the thing is you're supposed to like keep a full 
thing while you walk around and you don't spill anything. That's oh, my worst shit because you know when the guy chases you with the chainsaw at the end, you're gonna have to run it. If no. you're spilling your beer, I'd be well, mad. Not as if hell. you know it's not a real chainsaw. <laughs> So, I know they never come after me. When I now walk I out know. Of the they always come after me, and I'm like, not the one. <laughs> we went to a haunted corn maze a few years ago, my wife and I, as a fun date. We went there during the day because it was just a regular corn maze. You could walk around, like, all right, let's try and map this out because we're going to come back tonight. It's going to be a haunted corn maze, right? <laughs> we're going to map this out. Oh my so God, we, do. We, we, we did. Like, I'm like, I got a notebook and everything. Like, we got this, right? And um, then we come back and they took us to a different maze. Like, shit. Okay. <laughs> and and my wife, Kate, is a wonderful person. And she's always had this thing with horror movies. Like, that dumb bitch, she fell while running from the psycho killer. Blah, 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 blah. Immediately, clown comes after us with a chainsaw. We start running and she falls, just eat shit on the ground. And then the guy took his mask. I was like, are you okay? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. He's like, cool. I'm gonna go get those kids, and then he just runs <laughs> off. Uh, so oh, I'm running through the corn. I'm cheating at that point. I'm just <laughs> going through the actual corn. He's just running west. <laughs> yeah. so, I'll get out of here somehow. Like, catch me now. <laughs> go west, my son. <laughs> so I don't do haunted houses anymore, but uh, I say a few, and I mean more than a few. It's probably like ten years ago. Uh, my boyfriend and I went to a we were at a campground and they had a haunted house and they had a haunted hayride. And I was mm-hmm. like, I don't really want to do the haunted house, but I'll do the haunted hayride. So we're, we're on this hayride forever. And we finally get to a spot where there's like a, like a lantern lit in the cornfield. And I looked over and I said, Oh, they're trying to point our attention there. So the scare is going to be, and I turned and that fucking monster was right in my face. <laughs> so I, almost knocked the whole wagon over because I jumped so high because I didn't expect him to be there that damn quick and in front of me out of everybody on the wagon so yeah I definitely will scare still but I knew he was gonna be there and he still scared the fuck out of me (laughs) so this uh beer fest fear fest apparently um you take your full to the brim pint glass oh no full of the number one seasonal beer that I keep, they, they put that in there like six times in this article. It cracks me up. It's Sam um, it's like um, Jackal, a pumpkin jump ale. Scares. Some SEO. <laughs> the number one seasonal beer um, through a series of jump scares each week, one drinker that makes it through the scarescape with a full glass will be rewarded with the full season supply of chilled to the bone Oktoberfest. I'm guessing that's the number one seasonal beer. So their pint glass stays full all autumn long. I would try it just to see if I could, you know, get a, a whole falls worth of October yeah, I, fest, to be I honest. Would, <laughs> I think the hardest thing for me, other than being easily startled, is the fact that having an entire beer and having to go through a process while holding it and not drinking it. Yeah, that's that's the worst part. I'd rather just go somewhere where they let you have a beer while you go through so there are a lot of houses like that. We actually have one here in the Metro Detroit area that has hidden bars inside it now. What? Whoa. Wait. Yeah. All right. What? Hidden bars? Yeah, I'm in I for think that. It's, I think it's Hush over in Garden City. You changed this whole they've podcast. Got a, <laughs> they've got a hidden bar that you can buy a ticket that gets you, you like, you have to get through the haunt to get to this particular bar. Wait, is but, it at the yeah. end or is it like oh, in the oh, middle? Oh, oh. I, I no, got, I think I got, it's in the middle. I don't know because I don't do haunted houses now. Hush but, Haunt has three secret bars hidden throughout the mazes. Each secret bar is equipped with two uniquely unique specialty alcoholic drinks, which are available for purchase once inside. In order to access all three secret bars, you will need to purchase a VIP bar creep pass, which is $12 per person. Oh, I totally do that. Absolutely. That'd be amazing. So next year, Better on draft goes to a haunted house like Scooby Doo style. How how I wonder if they limit you to one drink because you know people are gonna get drunk enough that they start fighting the people. I think I think you're uh (laughs) you'll be able to find all three secret. Yeah, you're supposed to access all three, so I think you're supposed Mm -hmm. to find all three. Okay, I'm gonna pee myself on this. There's a 
when we went to Omega Mart in Vegas, there was a bar at the end, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just yeah. happy to be at the bar. <laughs> it's it's not you can go to it at the it's hidden at the far end. I don't know what side of that is, but over by the meat counter, you can just go yeah. to it. Every time that I go is... to IKEA, I hope that there's a bar hidden somewhere in there, and there never is. You, you, they oh should. Oh my god, do there that. should be. They're absolutely. I will build a beer. Oh, I don't we give need a shit. to. We need to send <laughs> IKEA a strongly worded letter to suggest it. Just right in the middle. I can't oh. do the whole thing. Just Sorry. anywhere. I stopped going through the maze. <laughs> yeah, I went backwards warehouse. and just go to the warehouse because yeah. I can't do the maze. I get lost every time I go. Yeah, I have to pee. I can't every handle time. it. They're, and they say idea. go this way and you go that way and you're back in the bunk beds. And I didn't mean to be in the bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. I didn't mean to do that. You were asking a question? I don't remember what the question was. She was talking about, about bunk about beds. Ikea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah bunk, bunk beds, beds at Ikea. Yeah. Yeah. And everything needs a bar somewhere hidden in it inside of it. There's a bar inside of you right now. We we've talked about this on the show before. I think there's one place that is definitely in the need of a bar, and that is a hospital. <laughs> oh, Joe. yeah, yeah. And then you're fighting the doctors. When I think you could news. manage you can manage the uh, the alcohol intake like per day per person, but uh, yeah, you know, not not enough to fight doctors, but enough to to manage, especially if you're there all goddamn day. <laughs> Like you're just kind of like chilling, waiting for for someone to to move along and pass, and you're just like, is, is it now? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab a beer. Don't die while I'm gone. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Can tell oh, you a good right. story when it comes to that, but where were you? <laughs> Did you bring it in yourself? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's an off air conversation. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, let's keep it on air. Dan, what's your article? Okay, so similar to another, uh, this is a Boston Beer article. So, and this is leading to the question I actually want to ask you guys for something that came up this week. Uh, Boston Beer has filed a no compete lawsuit against someone who now works for Down East. Um, to just give you an ex- uh, gist of this, you can read the article. But someone who worked for Boston Beer up to 2015 now works for Down East Cider, I believe the, is the name of it. And they're filing a lawsuit to keep them from using trade secrets of Boston Beer, which they say working in this position, would they wouldn't be able to do based on what they know. But where I'm going with this is, and it's a little bit of a shift, uh, this week, I believe it was, in Michigan, you guys had a brewery named Tombstone open up. Yep. Should you be able to use the name of a brewery? Uh, a name from a brewery that's already established in another state. Mm-hmm. And to use this for an example, we had another brewery. You've been to this, Ken. We went to it right when you came out here. Had to change your name because there was a brewery with the same name in Colorado. And they couldn't use that name until the brewery closed. So do you feel that the owners or anyone in general, you should do some research and be able to use the same name of a brewery just because it's in another state? Or not. So I want to hear everyone's opinion on this. Dennis, I'm going to start with you. That's a good question. So, okay. Yeah. Can you use the name of a brewery that's in a different state? Yeah. That actually it's happened good. at the last brewery that I was at, uh, Guardian Brewing Company. Um, they registered their name first before a different brewery came out called The Guardian, right? I think they're in Indiana, if I remember correctly. And there's a bit of a cease and desist going on back and forth between them. Um, I don't know how that ever how that ever resolved. Uh, should you? I mean, it'd be the classy thing not to. But um, that's a great question. I don't know what the legality is behind that. I personally would try and really work hard to not have the same name. Personally, which you would you would think would be the thing. So I'll tell you the story of the breweries that worked out here. There was a brewery Please, yeah. in Arizona named Fate Brewing. Uh-huh. There was a brewery in Colorado in Boulder named Fate Brewing, and they sent a uh, cease and desist, mm-hmm. and they had to change their name to Mick Fate mm-hmm. to get away from that. They got past that because the brewery in 2019 in Colorado ended up closing, mm. so they could change their name back to it. Now, um, Ken, are you good with me naming the brewery in Michigan? Okay, you already did. I didn't name it. You already did. 
Did I say tombstone? Yeah. yeah. Said, did I? That was like the said. fifth word out of your mouth. So yeah. tombstone. Yeah. You yeah did. I didn't even realize. It is I did. something that we posted online as well. Ignore so. the guy. So yeah. So we have had people talking about it. A very well-established brewery down here called Tombstone um, has been here for a long time. Now you have a brewery in Michigan called Tombstone. Should they be able to do that, or should they be thinking about having a different name? What type should... of license do they have? Sorry, one more time. What type of license do they have? The as far as Tombstone, they're widely distributed. You talk about down here. I guess both. So I don't know what the Michigan one has. Tombstone it's a, it's a here brewery is... and winemaker, mm. microbrewery and winemaker license. Um. Uh, so should like I, I guess here's like the the thing is is that can should like the these are the the weird words that we use to try to put a a, a belief on it. So should you be able to do it? Could you be able to do it? Are you able to do it? Like mm-hmm. the, these questions. So like for Tombstone here. Um, should they be able to do it? Sure. If that's what they want to name their brewery, great. Should Tombstone in Arizona, should they have a problem with that? Say, hey, stop it. Yes, they should be able to do that too. Um, there are times where it is not necessarily mutually beneficial, but breweries do it. Like there's two Downey breweries. There's a Downey brewery outside the state of Michigan, and there's a Downey brewery in Michigan. Um you know, we know the Downies is the Downey family. Why they named their brewery Downey, I couldn't tell you. The other one. Um, so, like, should they do it? I don't know. Yeah, great. Should so they, like, should Tombstone in Arizona say something about it? Yeah. Yes. Should that mean they have to change that? Yes. Like, it's, it, so it's a throw- chance you have to take. Sorry, I keep, like. No, it's okay. Interrupting. <laughs> so to throw a wrench into this, the main brewer from Tombstone here in Arizona worked under John Mallet at um, Bell's. At Bell's, thank you. Which makes it even more interesting. What about you, Wendy? What's your thought on this? I guess I'm I'm kind of torn. One, because when you are putting a business together, you generally do your dojo due diligence to see Mm -hmm. if there is another there is another business with that name not even just businesses like i was doing a podcast or not a podcast but a blog and i did searches to find out if there was a blog with the name that i wanted to use already Mm -hmm. so i feel like they have to know that there is that other brewery out there but at the same time like i just looked up batch brewing because I know that there is a, another batch that I think is in like Ireland. Hmm. And it came up with like six different cities. Now, granted, they all have different like batch brewing company, branch brewing, batch brewing co. Like they're all hmm. a little bit different. But I think that people, I, I think that you need to look at what they're trying to do with their business. Mm -hmm. Like if they just want to be a small batch brewery that serves what where are they? They're new Baltimore tombstone that is serving the new Baltimore area. They're not going to harm tombstone in Arizona who's distributing. Mm -hmm. But if they're trying to branch out, then that might impede their. So I think that, you really need to look at what the br- the business is trying to do as well as where they're doing it. That's fair. I agree with that. Here, here's what they will run into an issue, though, is, is that if Tombstone in Arizona decides to start uh, destroying here in Michigan. Uh, yeah, that's where you're going to run yeah. into the issues. Yeah. And you will run into issues because obviously there is a tombstone in Michigan that does that. But there's there's also look at um, a very, very close within the alcohol world. There's Dark Horse Wines mm-hmm. and Dark Horse Brewery, which are not the same organization. And although they're alcohol, 
they're both in the same realm of, you know, alcoholic drinks, they are able to coexist next to each other um, without any interference between the two. So I, uh, again, I feel like if you, you, we're not talking dogfish, hogfish, we're talking, or final gravity, original gravity, which is another one here in Michigan. Like we're, we're talking tombstone tombstone. Like that's the name, the name it's, mm-hmm. it's the exact same. So um, should they over at tombstone in new Baltimore, you know, be worried if tombstone in Arizona is destroying here? Sure. But I don't think you're going to foresee an issue until they actually cross tabs. Um. Dan, you know, Tombstone because you're in Arizona. I know Tombstone because I travel a little bit like that's how we know this Tombstone in Arizona. But if you look at the the rando who has a boat in, you know, Chesterfield or New Baltimore and is going to their brand new brewery called Tomb, they don't know Tombstone, Arizona. They don't know about that brewery. They don't know anything about that. They just know there's a new brewery in Michigan called Tombstone. Mm -hmm. So I think. I, I think, do you want to take that chance? That's the question. Take the chance of using the name? Yep. I agree with that. Because you would think if you were going to name a brewery, you would search to make sure. And and here's the thing is, is that like their their name makes sense because they're actually in the, the funeral business. That's their. Oh. Well, and the other Tombstone's original location is in Tombstone, Tombstone Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's there's both good reasons why to choose that name. They don't have the same logo, the same icon. Like you could you could tell the difference between the two if you put them next to each other. You wouldn't know that they're both named Tombstone, um, but you would know that like the, these are Tombstone breweries. So I think is it the best choice? No, personally. Like if when when we created Better on Draft, first of all. I have no idea how Better on Draft existed eight years ago when we created this show. Nobody oh, had it. It wasn't yeah. a blog. It wasn't a show. It wasn't on YouTube. And it like we pre- Yeah. But if somebody came in and said, hey, we're better on draft and they're a drip coffee show. And I'd be like, all right. Um, <laughs> well, uh, we didn't have an issue with the name. You remember the original logo? Oh yeah, we 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 got um we got screwed by a person on Fiverr, which Fiverr yeah. made us whole, so I don't care. Um, somebody on Fiverr sold us for for those that are listening. Somebody on Fiverr sold us our logo, which was fine. We went to Fiverr, we got someone to do it. But what they did was is that they stole the San Diego Beer Talk logo. Yeah, amazing. Put our name on it. <laughs> yep. Folks, those guys over at San Diego Beer Talk, I know they don't exist anymore, but I will still say to this day, they didn't talk to us. Somebody else pointed it out, and we reached out to them, and you said, hey, we understand this is what happened. We are completely sorry. Here's our email, like our contract with the original person. We will be – give us a few weeks to get our logo fixed everywhere. And then after that, if you see our old logo, just tell us. We'll switch it. Like – there, there was a very big mutual agreement. Like they understood we did not purposely steal it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like th- those are the kinds of things too, where um, it's, it's all about collaboration and cooperation. Um, if somebody came in and said, you know, Hey, we want to use better on draft and it is a fantasy football or a football show. I'd be like, all right, so we're not in the same realm, but that that's a really, you know, to choose that name is very, very specific. Yeah. And at that point, I'd be like, all right, how can we either work together, work side by side, collaborate? Or I'd be like, at the, at some point, I'd just be like, all right, let's change your name to something else. Yeah. At that point, everyone just needs to stop, collaborate and listen. There yeah. you go. Ice is back with a brand new edition. <laughs> Something grabs a hold of me tightly. I, I shouldn't say any more before we get uh, banned on YouTube. Here, or here something comes like Vanilla that. Ice. Hold on. Uh, you know, uh, again, Dan, Dan, remember Vanilla Ice? There we go. He had ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. Oh, yeah. yeah that's Whereas a queen. Queen, didn't Queen give him permission to use that? I'm pretty sure. W- Wendy, you're muted. No, he had that extra little ding in there. 
Oh, he he changed it. Yeah, he said yeah. that in an interview. He said that. Ding, 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 ching, ting. <laughs> that's that's the nothing in there. <laughs> there it is. Full circle. Right I remember there. him Bumps. doing that in the thing. Which <laughs> hey, that was that was a great bow by everyone. My name is Ken for Wendy Dennis and Dan. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Off next week, back in two weeks with the folks who created Beer City USA, the documentary series. No matter what you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. Have a good night. Cheers. <laughs>